the purpose of infusing a right with a constitutional element is to provide it a sense of immunity from popular opinion and legislative annulment. In saying so, the Supreme Court of India recognized the right to privacy as a fundamental right in a landmark judgment last year. But this right came with three restraints, that there must be a law in existence to justify an encroachment on privacy. Restrictions imposed on the right to privacy by the state should be reasonable and third, the means adopted should be proportional to the object of the law that seeks to impose a restriction on privacy. Starting this week, several petitions filed before the Apex Court argue that the Aadhaar Act and regulations under it don't fulfill these tests and hence violate the right to privacy recognized by the Constitution. The fine print spoke with constitutional lawyers to understand the likely fate of Aadhaar in the light of Supreme Court's privacy ruling. The first argument against the Aadhaar Act is that it unreasonably deprives an individual's rights to bodily, decisional and informational privacy. The Aadhaar number, which is unique to every individual, is a result of submission of a photograph, fingerprint and iris scan among other things. Section 7 of the Aadhaar Act makes proof of Aadhaar number necessary for receipt of certain subsidies, benefits and services. In the last couple of years, the government has made Aadhaar mandatory for social welfare schemes like nutrition programs, scholarship schemes, farmer subsidies and more. For availing all these subsidies and more, the Act forces citizens to surrender their biometrics, takes away the element of consent and mandates parting with most intimate and personal information. The receipt of public benefits and services contingent on the proof of an Aadhaar number is an unconstitutional condition. And so, the petitioners say the law violates right to bodily, decisional and informational privacy. Aadhaar is being mandated uh, for, uh, so that uh, those services are made available. Uh, in my opinion, to, uh, to enlarge this, to bring in the question of violation of uh, any uh, bodily integrity is, uh, does not appeal uh, in, 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 uh, in, any, in any significant way. Because uh, all that it is doing is that those who are seeking benefits have, have to have themselves identified for the purposes of taking those benefits. And because the choice is already there, it is for them to actually exercise that choice whether the benefit is there at all or not and government is obligated in any case to provide it. Uh, the objective is only to ensure that uh, it reaches the right source and for the purposes of privacy it has to be a law and in, even in so far the restriction is concerned uh, it should be in public interest and should be reasonable. So both requirements keeping the act in mind are satisfied. The contentions raised by the petitioner are flowing out of the, our understanding of the right to privacy, the right of bodily integrity and an legitimate argument is being made out today to say that the Aadhaar Act infringes or restrains or curtails such rights and the desire of the government not only to take the biometric details but to further utilize them for ostensibly the purpose of giving benefits to citizens is not good enough to justify the legislation. Their concern, the petitioner's concern and its, and its alleged made concern is that this, that the benefits that are sought to be portrayed by the government that are given to people uh, all over India, those benefits were given even prior to this legislation and this act rather than being a beneficial piece of legislation is really a curtailment of your right because I have the right to retain my details and not necessarily have them shared arbitrarily. In the words of senior advocate Sham Divan, the concept of eminent domain does not extend to the human body. There is of course something called personal body autonomy, Divan argued before the apex court this week. The second ground on which petitioners have challenged the Aadhaar Act is that it lacks an opt-out provision. The argument is that having linked their Aadhaar number to a particular service, individuals have no option to withdraw or opt out. 
The act, petitioners argue, fails to give full effect to an individual's decisional autonomy and informational privacy to decide what information to share, when and with whom. In law, uh, if there is a, uh, uh, some, a benefit is personal, the person who's, for whose benefit something is provided has got the right to waive it. Because unless there is a question of uh, uh, any public benefit or public policy where waiver will not come, if something is individual for a person, the individual can give up that particular benefit. So to the extent it doesn't recognize this right, that in law makes it bad. It's got nothing to do with privacy because just like where fundamental rights are concerned, they cannot be waived because there is a larger public interest behind the public policy behind it. But in so far as the individual seeking the benefits are concerned, that is private and personal to individual concern, and it being private and personal to the individual concern, he has a right to waive it. Uh, so that it is the course to the question of liberty and liberty to the extent it is uh, it is legally sanctified. Now, privacy is a facet of liberty, but privacy is not liberty as such. The difficulty that we have faced is that since 2009, when Aadhaar was brought in, successively, the governments, various governments of the day have implemented the use of Aadhaar despite the Supreme Court saying that it is optional and not mandatory. And that was the whole purpose of the Supreme Court's orders to ensure that people had the right not to opt in or to opt out. That being the concern, and that being a concern which even the Supreme Court has recognized, my belief is that it's a legitimate concern and it's a legitimate argument to say the right to privacy is violated. However, by the time this gets decided, my fear is that it may become an empty or a limited victory because by that time Aadhaar has really become implemented almost across the board for all, all, every aspect of our life. The third argument is the mandatory use of Aadhaar for services by private players such as mobile service providers and banking. The petitioners argue here that this does not pass the test of legitimate aim laid down by the Apex Court. The petitioner's argument is that the extension of the use of Aadhaar for identity verification by private entities or for schemes that are not funded from the Consolidated Fund of India cannot be justified. In the last one year, Aadhaar has been made mandatory for use of mobile services, filing tax returns, banking and several entities such as mutual funds, insurance companies have been allowed to use the Aadhaar architecture for authentication purposes. This, the petitioners argue, is beyond the stated or legitimate aim of the Aadhaar Act and hence unconstitutional. Aadhaar is basically for it's, it's certifying a person's identity. Now, it can be used for, by various agencies basically to make sure that the person with whom they are dealing is the person concerned. But if you look at the Act, the Act itself says that uh, the requesting uh, uh, agency can ask for any other information also. And because uh, 3 talks about Aadhaar being voluntary and in so far as the entitlement is concerned, it goes to the choice of the person concerned, you cannot through an independent measure violate what under the principal act is voluntary. So a third agency cannot make it mandatory. That which under the principal act itself is voluntary. It's got nothing, nothing to do with any other argument and this is what is recognized by the act itself which contemplates a requesting agency to talk to ask for other information also. So we don't need to actually color it with the very grandiloquent constitutional issues and simpler statutory issues which are part of the law can be used for the purpose of achieving the same purpose. An issue will arise that there are two kinds of services. One is services which are ancillary to what the state would provide, so licensed services, whether Aadhaar should or should not be legitimately used for them. The second and more and greater concern is is the Aadhaar going to be available to all and sundry for non-essential services? I would, I would uh, submit that, you know, for example, banking is a private matter. As long as I declare my returns to the income tax department, how I go about my banking is a private matter. There are regulatory concerns which the bank may have. But today, everywhere Aadhaar is brought in and if Aadhaar becomes the basis of my information being given selectively or even partly to people in the private sector for verification, that is definitely 
in the current context, I believe in infringement of one's privacy. The fourth argument of the petitioners is that the Aadhaar Act fails the proportionality test laid down by the Supreme Court in its right to privacy ruling. The petitioners have argued that the extent to which the Aadhaar Act violates the right to privacy is not proportional to its objectives which can be achieved even through less onerous means. They have argued that the objective of the law to check welfare leakage and good governance can also be achieved, for instance, through smart cards that do not require biometric information. Additionally, the fact that the regulations lack necessary safeguards to ensure security and confidentiality renders the Aadhaar scheme disproportionate. Because their alternatives doesn't make a choice bad. Because as far as the courts are concerned, the courts don't go into wisdom. The courts, courts go into legality. So until it is patently arbitrary, uh, mainly because there are other choices will not necessarily uh, will not necessarily make the choice which becomes part of a statutory enactment bad. What is wrong here is and what causes this uh, the rising of this apprehension is because I think it's section eight which says that the information can be for some any other purpose also. Now it is that, and if you it if you uh, uh, imp, uh, uh, set aside that portion of it, the structure of the act does not in any way be affected because any other information is beyond the objective of the act. The purpose of the act is to provide subsidies and services, etc., upon identification. The identification authority is only to authenticate the identity. The requesting agency is going to provide uh, seek information from the identification authority for the purpose of verification whether the person is there at all or not. Ideally, it should just end with an affirmative or negative answer as to whether the person is that individual at all or not. And if you read it down to mean that, then the other concerns will uh, 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 to that extent disappear. There are always uh, means such as the smart card. In England, you had the National Health Service where you filled in a form, gave your details and this is before biometrics which entitle you to medical care and subsidized medical care. There are similar schemes available which do not necessarily require the entire gamut of information that we have gathered un under Aadhaar. Having said that, if Aadhaar is stated to be legitimate, then what is essential and if it is held to be legitimate rather, then it is essential to ensure that personal information which incidentally even under the IT Act there is, there is a separate, there are separate regulations for personal private information. This information must be accorded the highest sanctity and secrecy and must be used only and only for the stated objective of the Act that is good governance. It should not be available to the private sector, it should not be available to the world at large. In his opening arguments before the Supreme Court, senior advocate Sham Divan said that the state is empowered with a switch by which it can cause the civil death of an individual. Switching off Aadhaar, he said, will completely destroy an individual. The government is likely to begin its arguments next week and we'll promise to stay on top of it. That's all on this week's show. Do send us your feedback. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.